first step in all this was to get a good scan of the car. We had to go pretty deep into the car. It was a lot of time scanning. A lot of the parts were scanned off the car and then put into the scan later on so that they're in context so we could still get all the details. One of the first steps I took after scanning was to create uh, a mock-up core and kind of see how big of a core can we fit in this space. One important design feature with the intake manifold was to still have access to the oil filter and oil filter housing. In order to add more airflow, we added a larger plenum and that plenum started to reach into the space that allowed access to the oil filter housing. So you could see that we have this cutout in the intake manifold and that still allows just enough access so you could still pull out the oil filter. One thing I didn't really like about this stock system is how you have a pretty small plenum. You could see it's not very deep. If you take off all this bracing, the ports really aren't huge. And then in addition, this lower plenum, you can also see the way it flows. There's not a lot of room for air to get right here. One of my design goals was to get the lower plenum to flow a little bit better and really use the whole core. Here we have most, I believe, of the 3D prints that we made for this project. You want the air to go through the whole intercooler, which will increase cooling and also decrease pressure loss. This is the first iteration of the bottom plenum. These are where the coolant ports on the throttle body kind of come through right there. It was a very hard geometry to get. And then you could even see when you go from iteration one to iteration two, you have a few changes. And then in addition, we added a fin inside of here. You could see something similar with the upper plenum and runners. So there's a bunch of different runner shapes that we tried out. One important part of the process was also trying to get equal flow distribution between the runners. So we did this in a few different ways. I did simulations with CFD in order to kind of estimate where the air was gonna go. And then in addition, we were putting this whole intake manifold that was 3D printed onto the flow bench and flow testing it. One thing that we noticed is that the inside runners, so call them two, three, four, and five, had much better flow than the outside one and six. To make matters worse, you have the cutout for the oil filter housing as well as these other little bracket cutouts, which are gonna restrict your flow going inside. When you have inconsistent flow between runners, it creates all sorts of problems. I mean, basically you have one cylinder making more power than another cylinder. So in order to make up for it, you can see this iteration is flat on the bottom. And on this iteration, I was able to add a little bit more room right here to add a little bit more airflow to make up for it. Here we have what we ended up with in terms of casting. Generally, we use casting as it's a good, accurate way to create these parts. And we were able to cast it in a way where it was easy to assemble. The tolerances were very tight so that everything fits together. For instance, you have this little recess in the plenum and then the runners fit in there perfectly. It could be welded right then. One of the features that was very important was sealing the manifold to the cylinder head. So you could see that we have the pockets for the factory O-rings. It's held in there with the factory tang so it doesn't come out. Our intake manifold is gonna come with the pockets for the factory O-ring in addition to this gasket. We tested both ways with the O-ring and the gasket here. Uh, we didn't notice a big difference on the dyno, but we also took the gasket out on the street, did some driving in traffic, and we didn't really see any issues with the heat creeping into the intake manifold. We believe that this gasket works pretty well, but you still have that option of using the factory o-ring. Either way you want to go, we have it covered. With this intake manifold, there was two big the design constraints that we had to incorporate. One was port fuel injection. So we're adding a system where you could run 
six port injectors to go along with your six direct injectors from the factory. And then we also have a solution for those who aren't running port injection because we know, you know people are going to be running this manifold at all different power levels. Here we have the stock intercooler core um, and we're comparing it to our Mishimoto intercooler core. We ended up at about 36% bigger with our Mishimoto core. A lot of the decision to get there was a space constraint, so we were limited in um, almost every direction. The taller we made it, the more we're restricting airflow, because as this core gets taller, that means we have a smaller lower plenum, and the upper plenum has to do more of like a 180 to get the air in. So you could see that the, the stock core is very dense. A lot of this you know, square area is devoted to airflow, so we wanted to keep that the same. One thing that we do on our air to water cores that um, helps the water flow is that the fins are pointing in the direction of the water flow. So the fins are actually helping to guide the water through the core. The more fins we have, the denser the pitch, the better cooling we're gonna have, but also the pressure drop across the core starts to increase. Uh, we were actually able to see a pretty nice improvement in pressure drop over the stock core. Um, part of that is because the core is bigger, there's more flow area, but also the density is kind of just right to allow both cooling and flow. That's always been a challenge with these air to water manifolds and intercoolers. You really need to balance flow and cooling. When they get more restrictive, you lose power, but when they can't cool, you also lose power. So it's, it's definitely one of the more challenging projects, but you can see we have a pretty nice end result.